Oh, wow, look at you. Mr. Feral Carcass guy. Help me get uh, pain tolerance points, boys and girls. I need pain tolerance points. Oh, that didn't work so well. <laughs> Another skill point. What do we want to put? Oh, shit! Oh, buzzard. Stupid buzzards. Welcome back, everybody, to the Zombie Metropolis series featuring Undead Legacy. I'm an old guy gaming, and we have a couple of shiny new M2 Evo 970 drives on the computer. Yay! <laughs> so I have spent the last couple of days. If you guys are on the Discord, you, you already probably know about this. But, um, yeah, I spent the last couple of days upgrading my system um, and just, you know, redoing the drives, redoing the files, trying to get a little bit better organized. And um, so I had a little bit of a fright last night when I was moving my my save onto the new drive. Well, basically what I had to do is I had to um, uh, I, I changed my main drive out, my C drive, which was a 500 gig 970 M2 uh, for a, uh, a one terabyte. And I installed two separate one terabyte 970. So I've got my C drive for the operating system and gaming. And then the D drive is strictly for recording and editing. Uh, so nothing else is on the D drive except for um, it, that OBS records to it. And then I'll use that, of course, to edit. Um, so all of the, the disk I.O. is going towards uh, performance. Um, so anyway, in order to do all of that, of course, I had to back everything up that I needed on a couple of external drives. And in the process of doing that, I, I reorganized my files too because it, it, it was kind of messy. Um, so I figured, well, what the hell? Since I'm doing this anyways, let's get organized. So I, it's, it took me several hours to go through, organize the files, get rid of the stuff I didn't really need, that sort of thing. And of course, a part of that process was, um, here, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. It's a bit loud. Uh, part of that process was backing up my game saves for all the games that I currently have going on. So, you know, Undead Legacy, Imperion, and uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. And um, so I did that, right? But somehow or another, in the process, throughout that entire process, I somehow or another lost my my custom um, night... Uh, what am I trying to say? Nitrogen. Yeah, my custom nitrogen world for this save. So when I, you know thought I had everything all set up and loaded back up and went to start the game you know all the red the name of the save was red which I, I, I knew oh crap that's not good um and I don't I honestly I don't know how how it happened but somehow or another I, I managed to lose the nitrogen generated world for this save so I'm starting to get a little bit panicked because you know <laughs> we're like way into this this series now it's like a, you know i didn't want to start over and, and all that you know we still have stuff to do so i didn't you know i i was i was a little bit uh distraught we'll say um it took me a little while to figure out what the problem was too but what it came down to is i was missing the actual world file now i had my save file if you guys are familiar with how seven days to die file structure works you have one file that is your oh we better not use a hammer on this guy uh, you have one file that is the actual world files themselves that the game starts with uh, but then you also have your save which basically saves the changes that you've made to that world right and so it, it was the main world file that I had somehow you know misplaced in the process of the move and I could not find it anywhere so I was starting to starting to panic a little bit and then I remembered that I had taken that world and actually uploaded it to a Google Drive and shared that uh, drive out 
uh, with all of you guys. So uh, it, it should, I, I think it's in the video description of this series. Uh, if it's not, I can put it in there, but I'm pretty sure I did that. And that's what saved my butt. So I was, <laughs> I was able to go back uh, and re-download, you know, the Metropolis world that I, I created from the Google Drive and then, you know, put it back in where it needs to go and then everything was okay. But boy, I'll tell you what, I was a little concerned there for a little bit. I didn't have any problems moving, you know, my Imperion save or my uh, Red Dead Redemption save. Well, Red Dead wasn't an issue at all because that saves in the cloud anyway. So as soon as I reinstalled the game on the new drive, started up, I left right, you know, I was left off right where I was last time. So that wasn't even a problem at all. But anyway, uh, so yeah, we're <laughs> we're back in business. Uh, a couple other things too. Uh, I have a couple of 1080s. That, and I bought them like, I don't know, two years ago, two, three years ago. And I had them set up an SLI. And then when Alpha 19 came out, I was having all kinds of stuttering issues and, and problems like that. And so, you know, after a bunch of messing around, I, I realized that it was the SLI that was messing it up. And, oh shit, didn't I just kill you? Um, is there another one? Okay. So anyway, um, I, you know, I hooked all that ba back up and I, you know, after I fixed the save and got the game back up and running, I came into the game and it was just stuttering something terrible. Um, and then I also uh, logged into Imperion and pretty much had the same thing. So if you guys didn't know this, SLI is, is kind of infamous for, for micro stuttering. And so I finally just said, screw that. And I, and I disabled it. I still use the other graphics card uh, in OBS uh, for encoding. Um, and it's, it seems to work okay. I mean, it doesn't, let me put it this way. It, do, it doesn't cause any problems because, you know, there's a big debate going on and it has been for a while that you don't need an extra graphics card in, in OBS because uh, if you're using in, in, uh, InVink, I should say, qualify that because, you know, the, the processors uh, in the graphics card is separate for InVink. So, it, so supposedly it doesn't have any impact on performance. Um, but, man, eww, that was close. I didn't, I didn't want to shoot the, the demo there. But then, you know, other people say it does work, right? So, I went ahead and, and set it up that way so that OBS uses my second graphics card. So, you know, I have it installed, but I don't have the SLI turned on. And, I mean, it seems to work fine. It, it certainly does not run worse, you know, we'll put it that way, like some people were saying. And I think, too, part of that really just kind of boils down to your actual system anyway. Uh, what works for one person might not exactly work the same for another and that sort of thing. So, uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm still in the process of getting, you know, setting things up. But obviously I have enough stuff set up. Man, what is with all the demos tonight? Good Lord. Oh, man, I'm glad cops don't set demos off. Um, I still have more work to do. I haven't really spent any time at all um, setting up my streaming stuff. So I, I've got my recording stuff set back up. Had to go through and... What do we got here? Oh, wow. That's uh, some new stuff. I haven't seen that combination of stuff before. Uh, anyway, uh, so I still have to get all the streaming stuff set up. I still have a little bit more, you know, file stuff to take care of. But I'm getting pretty close to being back in business. Uh, but I wanted to try and get a video out for you guys um, for tomorrow, Thursday. It's Wednesday night right now. Um, you know, so that's what we're doing. And anyway, so hopefully tomorrow or Friday at the very latest, I'll be completely all back up in business and running. And I'm kind of excited to, to edit this video after I'm done recording it just to see, um, you know, if the performance is better. Because I was editing on a... Um, a SATA, a Samsung Evo 950 SATA drive. Um, and now I have everything on an M2 uh, 970, uh, which is substantially faster than the 850 was. So I'm hoping to, you know, that, to see a pretty significant improvement in performance. Uh, one of the big reasons why I made this move, uh, I, you know, I was starting to run out of space for one thing, but it's performance you know my my machine does pretty good uh with game games and recording and streaming but man running premiere pro and editing and all that is just a chore and um so i'm hoping you know that that improves because if if that can improve then that means i 
won't spend as much time editing and waiting for the damn computer to render and that gives me more time to you know to do more stuff essentially so anyway we'll see how things work out when we uh, do the edit uh, of this video after we're done recording here uh, don't blow up you son of a uh, the other thing I was going to mention too and you might notice this is I have the graphics um, turned up higher than they were before so you can kind of see that this has a little sheen on it that it didn't have before and in fact here we can just look at those right now because it pauses the game uh, but this is basically these are basically my graphics settings right now so they're a little bit higher than they were before I always pretty much turn off motion blur and usually turn off depth of field well I always turn it off in this game because I don't like it in this game um and so I guess well actually you know in, now that I'm looking at this this is not I thought what I did was I set it to high here. Let's try something. Let's set it to, we could try it on ultra and see how it does, but you know, we won't really know how well it does until we get outside. Cause seven days to die in the, in the interior usually runs pretty good. It's when you get outside, when you really see, uh, you know, how things are going. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I set this on high and then I just turned off. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we just turn off motion blur. And we turn off depth of field, which is already off. And yeah, I, I guess that's what I had on before. I'm not sure. Oh, I do. I did have textures turned up to full though, because because that I I like to have good textures. So yeah, I think that's what I had before. You guys could look back at the video if you want, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. But like I said, we won't really know how well the game runs until we get outside, because that's where seven days really can start to bog down uh, if your system can't handle it. But I think we'll we should be we should be pretty good. Uh, it sure it feels pretty good right now. It's it's a little stuttery, but then when is this game not stuttery, right? Uh, but it's it feels fairly smooth right now. What is our frame rate? Uh, we're at 37, 38, 39. So that's kind of lowish, but not terrible. Uh, I you know anything over 30 I can certainly live with. And, and remember, I'm recording too at the same time on the same machine, so that definitely affects things too. Okay, let's turn that back off. But we'll we'll see what it's you know like when we get outside. Alright you guys, well I'm gonna finish the, the little hard night here. And then um I'll bring you back in the morning and we'll figure out what we're going to do next. Uh, I haven't had obviously I haven't spent any time at all on, on the big horde base build because I haven't even been on my you know in a game at all for the last two days. Uh, so we'll just Maybe go mess around with that a little bit, or maybe we'll just go do another random POI for the rest of this episode. We'll see. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, guys, it is morning, and uh, I've noticed two changes since uh, the last time I did Little Horde Night. First is the dogs are starting to show up again for a very long time. That um, I wasn't getting any dogs, and I hadn't even really noticed it until they started showing up. Then I'm going, wait a minute. We haven't been getting any dogs. And then the other thing is that I'm starting... It seems like I'm starting to see some more um, variation in the loot again. Um, don't you blow up, you sucker. So, um, you know, that's a very good thing. So I wonder if um, Subquake came out with an, an, a recent update. I, I haven't had time to really check. Of course, so it appears like he maybe he has because, um, yeah, no dogs for a long time and the same loot every single night. But it seems like maybe something has changed uh, for the better. Uh, so anyway, we have um, three points, I think, to spend. So let's just finish these yahoos here. I'm very, very low on shotgun shells. I started actually using the, the badger a little bit two and then the sniper rifle a little bit the badger's a really nice little weapon and it packs a pretty good punch the only problem with it is that it's only got five shots and because it's a revolver i can't put a magazine extender on it unfortunately all right are you guys done finally i still hear uh combat music Okay, well, let's turn this off. I think we're I think we're done. There might still be um, a vulture out there that we got to deal with, but uh, for the most part, I think we're in pretty good shape. 
Okay, so um, what did we get? So let's take a look. So uh, you guys saw me get this earlier. Uh, we got a puffer coat and we got um, a SWAT helmet and I think, oh, and we got uh, night vision goggles. Um, so we got some new night vision goggles and I haven't seen that. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that on a, on a little horde night. So yeah, it looks like some things have changed and I'm very happy about that because I was getting a little bit frustrated that I was getting the same stuff over and over and over. Some of the stuff we were getting was pretty good. I mean, <laughs> we got we got like eight of Stefan's treasure maps to do. We've got, I don't know, maybe almost a dozen augers that we can, you know, later on turn into um, more ore extractors and that sort of thing if we want to. But I was just, you know, it, it shouldn't have been that way. We should have been seeing more variety in the in the loot. So anyway, oh crap, I didn't want to do that. I hate it when that happens. When you accidentally upgrade a, a concrete block uh, and you didn't mean to, you know. Okay, so um, let's shoot Edgar in the nuts with a crossbow bolt because he deserves it. All right. So we are finally finished with the Horde Knight, the little Horde Knight. Um, you can tell that, you know, because I've changed my graphic settings, you can actually see the glass now, whereas before you couldn't. So that's kind of neat. Um, and I didn't realize there was a hole right here either. <laughs> uh, so we should probably fill that in so we don't accidentally fall through it, eh? Uh, all right. So let's see here. Um, I think what I want to do is... Um, do I have any wood frames made up? Let's take a look. If I did, they'd probably be in here. Oh yeah, we got 25. I kind of would like to have some more of those. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go lay out uh, the wood frames for our little horde tunnel. Um, and the reason I'm going to start with wood frames, and the wood frames are just placeholders, is because there's going to be places where, you know, I'm going to need a gap for like electric fences and that sort of thing. So... I want to uh, I want to just start with wood frames. I don't want to fill the whole thing in with concrete and then just have to bust stuff out later. Uh, so that's what we'll do. But I think we're going to need actually quite a bit more than just what we have. So let's grab about half of our boards and our nails. And how many can we make with this? 224. Uh, let's make 200. For the first time in a very, very long time, we're actually getting low on nails. Not that that's a big deal. I mean, they're easy to make, but uh, we've just had so many of them because we got got a bunch of them early on in this playthrough from taking couches and stuff apart. Put this in here. So this crappy Magnum revolver. Do we have another Magnum? Um, yeah. Uh, we have two crap Magnum revolvers. So what I might end up doing is turning one of these into a, um, a blueprint unless we can already make the magnum where's the here's the ballistics table oh yeah we already know how to make a magnum so okay well not really much point in doing that we'll probably just scrap it for parts then um okay let's put a couple things away here guys and uh, then we'll go check out the Horde base. Oh, you know what? One thing um, I forgot and I wanted to show you uh, for the uh, at least the first time we do it on camera is we can make gumbo. Look at that. So what do we need? We need a beef, a peas, a can of stock, three fats, and some water. Okay, so let's grab that. Didn't I make a bunch of water? I did. Okay. So we'll grab the water. We'll grab uh, the beef, the peas, and the... Was it chicken? I think it was the can of stock, right? Yep, that's it. Okay, cool. This is going to be our first high-end dish of this uh, series. And we can make a total of seven of those babies. Beautiful. Beautiful. So it's the stock that we're a little bit low on. So that's going to take six minutes. Um, 5.50. Oh, man, almost here. Let's just put another normal firewood log in there. 
There we go. As mentioned earlier, we need to go um, hit some treasure maps and some vending machines. One of you guys mentioned in the comments a long time ago, many, many episodes ago, that to be more realistic, you thought that I should only hit a vending machine once. Because if you were, you know, going to loot a vending machine in real life in this situation, um, you know, you would take all the food out of it, but there isn't going to be like um, a vending machine delivery guy come <laughs> and restock it. So it doesn't make sense, you know, that you would... Uh, Oh, man, I don't like that reflection on the water. I like the, the reflection off. But if I turn the reflection off, then I'm not going to see the the glass. So I guess we'll leave it on for now. Anyway, uh, and it does make sense, right? Because here again, nobody's going to come along and restock the vending machine once I raid it. So it, it kind of makes sense uh, for us to do that. Uh, I guess the one thing about that, though, is that in a normal playthrough, you would have access to a trader whom whom you could also buy a canned food from. I, I think, can you buy canned food from the trader? Or you, or you could make an argument that the trader, you know, could restock the vending machine that's at his place or her place, right? So in our case, though, we can't do that. Oh, man, look at this. Okay, so this gives us 112 food, 56 health, 20 water, and a maximum stamina bonus of 40. Oh, boy, that's some good stuff. Yum, yum, yum. I already told you guys I don't actually like okra in real life. But, hey, you know, this is the apocalypse. So okra, even okra is pretty good. But look at that, man. That looks <laughs> that looks really delicious. It's making me hungry. I'm going to have to go eat dinner here pretty soon. Um, So is my food going up? Yeah, it is. It's a little, seems like it's a little slow, but it is ticking up. Good. So, Yeah. Oh, we got points. We got points. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we have two skill points. We almost have three. And so what we're working on right now is intellect. So we want to put a point into... Let's put a point into demolitions expert. And what is, this just gives us... Carry 20 more units. 20 units more in your backpack. I think this just opens up more slots as opposed to give us more weight. But I'm not really sure actually about that. Um, I thought I had figured that out before. Well, hell, let's just see. Okay, so right now we have, we can carry 283 weight. I don't know if that means we have 283 slots in here, though. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can we, eight? Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 3, 3, 1, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3, 7, 3, 8, 9, 4, 4, 1, 4, 4, 3. 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50. Okay. And there are six <coughs> slots in here, so we basically have 300 slots. Um, in our, in our backpack. And we can carry 283 weight, okay? So, if we do Meticulous Packer... So that gets us up to 303 weight. So it seems to me like there is no difference in what Meticulous Packer does. And, what's going on with my inventory? Here? Um, and uh, Pack Mule. It seems like they both... See, that says cargo capacity by 20 units, right? And this says... carry 40 units 20 units more in your backpack but what's the difference i don't think there's a difference that i can tell in both cases they allow you to carry more weight and i don't think they add more slots um you know let me know if i'm wrong about that but that's what it appears to me um because we had 283 so that just added 20 more things of weight um still worthwhile absolutely worthwhile you know to do that but um it just seems odd that you have two different perks and they both do exactly the same thing well maybe you know maybe it's not odd because it's just giving you an option if you decide to spec into intellect or if you decide to spec into uh strength is that what the other one is yeah uh no yeah pack meal yeah um then you can increase your backpack space in in either case so i guess that does kind of make sense 
I don't think it's a bad thing at all. It's just, it is just a little unusual because of the fact that it's the same exact thing happening, but they're two different perks with two different names. Uh, anyway, let's see here. So this is going to be done in about 14 seconds. And then we will go take a look at our horde base situation. When we kind of get out and about too, I want to I want to see what our frames are doing. All right, look at that, man! Six things of gumbo stew. I love it. Let's turn you off. Let's grab our uh, wood frames, as many as we have, and head on out. Definitely, definitely stuttering, but here again. That's pretty much par for the course for this game. Look at my head sticking out <laughs> at the top of the vehicle. That's hilarious. Oh, hey, check it out. Our oil pump is finished. And we got 46 oil shale. It's interesting how he implemented that, because basically when it fills up, it becomes a completely separate object. Um, it becomes a lootable object, right? You loot it, and then it turns into, a, once again, an unlootable object. Pretty clever. Let's go see if our ore extractor is done, too, by the way. Might as well. I don't know if you guys noticed that, that on the video, but as soon as I pulled that oil shale out, the lootable object broke... And then the unlootable object took its place and did like a little break animation. Let's see if it does the same thing here for the uh, ore extractor. I'm going to turn on our frames too. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're still high 30s, low 40s, which isn't bad. Um, with Oh, shit. With stutters. Oh, wow. Look at you. Mr. Feral Carcass guy. Down with the sickness. It's a party. Help, help me get uh, pain tolerance points, boys and girls. I need pain tolerance points. They're 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 definitely more than happy to oblige us on that. Oh, that didn't work so well. <laughs> it kind of had the opposite effect. What's in here? Nothing. Come on, Ronnie McDonnie. Come get me. Another skill point. What do we want to put? Oh, shit. Oh, buzzard. Stupid buzzards. All right, let's see here. We got um, another point, so we're going to go put that in salvage operations. This is the most important thing to me right now, actually, because of the fact that we need plastic for shotgun shells. And, um, oh, wow, we can put one in level four, two. Nice. Okay, so we only have to get intellect up to seven uh, in order to max this out. So that's really good. We don't have to take it all the way up to 10 to max that out. He dropped a bag. What you got for us, Mang? Oh, sniper rifle. Not bad. We just keep waking all the sleepers up. All right, screw those guys. Let's, uh... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, we got a glower coming. You guys are, like, so disruptive here. I'm trying to talk to the peeps. My uh, vehicle's kind of in rough shape. We better repair this guy. Okay, so anyways, when I loot this, um, you'll probably see it break really quick and then replace it with non-lootable. Okay, so here we go. We got seven sulfur. That's it? You hear that little quick break? That's a little lame. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of disappointed considering how long it took for that cycle to finish. We got seven sulfur. Come on. I mean, I know it's totally RNG, but still, maybe it'll be better next time. 
Oh boy. Okay, so let's see here. I'm actually not too terribly disappointed with our frame rate. Um, all things considered, because because here again, remember I'm recording too, but I am recording to a, a different drive, though, so that's something. Considering that we, you know, we have almost everything's turned up to to the high setting, so that's not too bad. This thing does not turn very well, but every, it does everything else really well. It just doesn't turn very well. All right, so look at this mess. Look at this mess. So basically, this whole tunnel here is going to be lined with what will ultimately be steel blocks. Uh, but what I need to figure out is where we're going to put... Here, let's put that down there. Uh, where we're going to put the, you know, the, the hatches and the fence posts. And, you know, we might, we might try some dark traps and stuff like that too. So so that'll be the floor there. Turn that into normal blocks. But here's the thing. Now, when we get over to about here-ish, I haven't decided ex exactly where because I want to I want to place the, the hatches and all that in first and kind of space it out from the entrance back here. But somewhere back in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig a two-block wide pit, probably all the way down to bedrock. And then what we're going to do in with that is we're going to put a door... Uh, a, you know, a flat facing door laying on its side, basically, um, as a, 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 a hatch. So kind of the same idea that we're doing right now with the mini horde base, except for it'll be a two block wide door instead of a single block wide hatch. And so uh, the idea being that if we, um, well, th there's a couple ways we could do this. Um, I could set it near me where I'm standing. So if, if it looks like we're going to get overrun, I just, you know, open the door and then the zombies fall all the way down, you know, to bedrock while we make our escape. Um, or, and, or what I might also do is put a door on the other side of the last hatch, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, if I feel like we're starting to get overwhelmed, then I open the door on the other side of the hatch. I have to be careful that I don't close the hatch itself, drop them down to bedrock and then just dig a path for them to, to path back up and kind of cycle around. That's kind of what I'm thinking, uh, how this is going to turn out. But um, the first order of business, though, of course, is to figure out the spacing um, and how many hatches and electric fences I'm going to put going along down the tunnel. And, of course, that's, you know, stuff that I'll pri primarily do off camera. But I, I just wanted to kind of bring you down here and, and you talk a little bit more about what the ultimate plan is going to be. It is day 82, so it's highly, highly unlikely I'm going to have this ready for day 84. Um, but... Uh, should, you know, ex uh, totally expect to have it ready by um, 91, day 91 for sure. So we'll see how things go, though. Uh, I'm just, you know, I'm still very busy with, with my job and stuff in real life. And plus, you know, we did this whole computer upgrade thing. And so I've lost a couple of days because of that, too. Not that that really matters for the game, because the game time only passes while we're in it. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll just see how things work out. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to let you go here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share out the video. And make sure you come and join up with us on Discord if you want to uh, hang out with old guy during the day and just kind of keep uh, keep abreast on what's going on with the channel and all that sort of thing. And, um, yeah, have a good one.